Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminars, Session 1 Basics, Part 11, Wall Type Modification. Okay, so I've just got an empty architectural template project open and we're going to look at modifying and creating bespoke walls. So if I go up to the wall tool, I'll quickly go over how walls and wall family types are made up. They are a series of bandings and you can see the naming of these walls indicate what they're made up from um, and there's a variety of them as you go down the types. We'll stick to the basic wall for now. Um, it's a cavity wall, 102 brick, 75 insulation, air gap, 100mm block with plaster on the inside. Uh, I can see that information if I go to the edit type button and then under structure if I press that button there, there's that same makeup, 102 brick, fiberglass batting, insulation layer, and then the core boundary layer is masonry block, and then it's got gypsum on the inside. Now, these six layers we can modify, we can move around and change and edit to suit ourselves. However, best practice is not to do that on an existing one, cancel out of that. I've got to duplicate to make any changes so I've got my own version of it. So what we're going to do is create two wall types from this basic wall makeup. So go to duplicate. I'm going to call it test top just to keep it very very clear. And then okay that I'm going to make a test bottom and we're going to stack top part of the wall to the bottom part of the wall. You'll see what I mean as we go along. So that gives me the liberty to be able to make changes um, using best practice. Best practice is not to change the wall type itself but to duplicate and I've been over that in previous videos as well but it's a very important one to remember. Okay so I'm not going to make many changes to this. I can remove layers, highlight that layer I'm going to get rid of the gypsum from the inside, delete that out. I'm not going to make any changes to the block. I'm going to make changes to the material facing. At the moment it's brick common. I'm going to call that brick soldier course. Okay. Leave everything the same. Okay that. Now if I jump into my 3D view. And insert that wall. If I go into edit types again and duplicate again, change that to bottom. Can now make a change. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to change to a different colour of soldier course and OK that. So now I've got a different wall type. One red, one buff. OK, so relatively simple to do. There are quite a lot of edits we can do within that wall structure and depending on what you want to do um, with your walling uh, there's a variety of approaches. We'll cover some of the more basic ones now. One of the more obvious ones is to do have a different type of walling as you move up the wall. Now you can put them on top of one another but that's very cumbersome. The easiest thing to do is make a wall type called a stacked wall where you've got a variety of wall makeups as you move upwards. So let's quickly do that. If we move down underneath the basic wall makeups, underneath the curtain walls a section called stacked wall. Now there is a stacked wall in here as default. If we go into the edit type and edit structure, that's a partition wall half an hour stacked on top of one another. Okay, cancel that out. What I'm going to do is duplicate again and call it test stacked. So this is now ours to make some amendments. 
instead of it being the walls that are prescribed inside there, what I'm going to do is find my new test top. and my new test bottom and let's make that 500 so that's the split height between where it goes from the bottom to the top and the top says variable because you can make it as tall as you like above that so you define it from the base upwards so okay that okay that now these are still our originals so if I go back into wall you can see that my test stacked is now part of the stacked wall makeup and there you can see I've got a stacked wall with the one type and the second type placed together. So stacked walls relatively simple concept to understand and you can have as many different types stacked on top of one another as you like. They can be different thicknesses as well which is the important thing if you've got some sort of break line in the height for instance if this wall type was thicker than this wall type and I'm going to force the issue here but let's just edit the type of that wall go into its structure and I'll just quickly make the masonry units wider so you'll see that one went wider individually but it also affected the stacked wall okay another thing to see with stacked walls we're going to the wall type underneath the basic stacked wall there are some other types and this is quite useful typical cavity with footing now you could make your own footing wall type and stack them up yourself um, however having one already there is quite useful because you can just go in and edit that uh, by making your own wall types so I'm going to edit it duplicate it test stacked footing Okay, so now I can come in and perhaps use those types there. Okay, that, okay, that, and that allows me to do the same thing, but it's already got a footing on the bottom of it. So you see, these aren't legitimate walls, but you can see how. Uh, taking ones that have already been done and editing them can speed up what you're doing. You may have noticed that this wall type has got a banding element within the fascia. Uh, so let's look at how to do that. We'll add it to our test top, but we're going to keep our test top wall without banding and then create a new type that has got banding in it. So let's go edit type and duplicate banding now that allows us to make some changes now this is often missed by people when they're first starting to get the hang of uh, Revit and it's this preview button down here if you open this up you'll see a plan of the structure of your wall the thing to understand here is including banding you have to change the view you're looking at the wall by at the moment this is greyed out these vertical structure options are greyed out you want to be looking at it in section so we're going to go to the section view now these aren't greyed out anymore and that allows us to make some changes so we're going to add a band in to do that we need a new material to apply to the wall so I'm going to insert above layer 1 and make sure that it's finish 4 the same as that it could be finish 5 as well and I'm going to add a material in to contrast 
brick common will do. The next step is to split where we want our band to be. To split region, I'm going to go at a meter and then I'm going to go 500. Now, the important thing when you're working in this environment is don't hit escape. Escape just cancels the whole thing and you have to start again and it's quite annoying at first and it's something that you just really got to stop yourself from doing. Um, escape is a very natural thing to hit when you're doing CAD or Revit. I tend to just click on modify to finish any operation I'm doing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my brick common, assign layer and then select there. Now you can see the hatch has changed so I've got essentially a different material on that face. Okay, They need to be the same width. If you need different widths then that's what the stacked wall that we just looked at is for. Okay so let's take a look at the result of that. Okay that, okay that, you can see I've got a different banding going on in my wall. It's not shown up on here because this type of wall is still looking at test top. I can change that to test top banding now. Okay that, okay that and you see there's the change. Lastly we can add profiles to walls. So let's add a profile to this banding wall type. So I'm just going to come in here, go to edit type. Now I'm not going to duplicate this time, I'm just going to add some more detail to the wall. Okay so at the moment we were talking about we've split the region but we've got other things we can do here too. We can do sweeps and reveals. So let's do a reveal first. Add a profile. There are some already existing profiles in here um, done for you. Now a profile is a two-dimensional shape you've always got to remember. Let's just add one of these in so you can see. From the top apply and OK that and see what it's done. Now I added it to the top. So we've got a three brick. Now that white there is actually showing where it's deleting, where it's editing in. And if I want to make changes to that, now I can see what's going on. I can start doing things like distance and apply. So that's jumped out the top of the wall. So let's take that in a bit, minus 300 and apply. So that's going to dig into the wall 300 mil down. Offsetting 100. That's come too far into the wall. So I might want to reduce that a little bit. So that's quite a nice deep hole. OK. And I can flip the side. It's on. If you want to, that's the vertical one. But I don't want to do that. Okay, and the side it's on here, exterior or interior. If I applied that now, you can see I'm going into the interior. So that's the sort of control I've got there. And you can see that's number one. You can have many of them and they can all be at different heights. So I'm going to okay that and okay that and okay. And we'll see that we've got a reveal dug into the top of that wall and of course our stacked wall. Another one is adding a profile so let's do that again. I'm going to edit this wall, edit type, go into the structure and this time we're going to add a sweep. Same again I'm going to add a sweep profile and this is coming out from the wall so let's go to the materials and call it brick common from top apply okay 
and we can zoom in and start to see what we're getting here. Now I'm going to modify that again. So I'm going to sweeps. Let's do our distance. Okay, offset 50 mil just to make it very bold. Okay, that. Okay, that. Apply and okay. Okay, so I think you get the idea. You can add and you can subtract from the wall using that method. The final thing we're going to look at is still adding a sweep but we're going to make our own sweep by creating a profile. So to do that, go to the letter R in the top left, hover over New, go to Family, come down to Metric Profile, and we can create a simple profile doing this. Now, I'm going to create a coping stone for the top of my wall. I'm going to save this is family Call it coping. Stick it on my desktop for now. Load it into project. Come back into my 3D view, and I can now add it to the top of this wall by going to into its edit types, edit the structure, add a new sweep. and I can load a profile in here from my desktop where I saved it. There it is. I can add a material if I want. So it's quite good concrete because it's got cast in situ, it's got a search so if I apply that, let's go to the top and just apply and see what it gives us. You see there's my coping stone. If I go into the sweeps again, I can now start to edit it. And there's 150, nearly there. You might obviously want to take a bit more time over doing this. OK that and OK that. So I've now got a coping stone on the top of that wall. I'm just going to show you here if I go to create similar this the profiles do allow the wall to go around corners and it neatly tidies up how those things meet so you don't need to worry about that. Okay so I hope that all makes sense. Um, it's worth having a good play with uh, to get the hang of wall types because it's something that you do an awful lot of. Okay so please find the next video in the series. Thank you.